continuing here. So yeah, you uh, you size up the girl of your dreams, and if she is perfect in your mind, and you can give 100% of yourself and devote yourself to her, then go for it, man. Put everything you got into it. That's what I recommend. But until you find that woman, that's the trick. You gotta have, you gotta be ready. You gotta be open to say, God, you know what? If she exists, then present her to me, okay? And let it come to pass. Okay, but that's the best we can do. You can only do your best. But, you know, the idea that, you know, you got to make a lot of money and, you know, we all know. I mean, it, it stands to reason that women want money. They want security. Okay, so it's very understandable why women seek men with money. It's not a mystery, right? We get it. We get it. But, you know, having a job is one thing. Having an income is one thing. But if she's looking for a guy that's rich, okay, she's probably not the girl for you anyhow. And, and, and vice versa. It works, swings both ways because there's plenty of male gold diggers out there too. So this prenup thing, I think, is such a good idea. To say, yes, it's a given, of course. You know, let, let, let's keep separate finance. So this is never an issue between us. Yeah, I mean, the worst thing you want to happen between your beloved and yourself is for money to come between you. Okay, Satan. Basically, I, I'm always supplanting the term money with Satan because it is what it's like. But I felt that I, I felt like, look, maybe she thinks that that's one of the reasons. Maybe this is how she thinks because I did the stupid, idiotic things I did, the foolish things I did that hurt her, that I never would have done if I if I had been in my right mind. OK, if I know what I know today, I never would have done those things. But you know what? Just to make sure when she finally said that, said I want a divorce. It was only then that I said, listen, honey, you know what? I mean, just to make sure that this was a non-issue, I. I offered to sign a prenup at that point because it turned out that I found out her dad was worth a lot. I, I think he's trying to be a billionaire because I know if he was worth 50 mil and invested in a lot of property back in the 80s, okay, then and he kept investing. I mean, he's like rich dad level. I mean, we're talking about he could be a billionaire by now. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I don't know how much of that he shares with her. But uh, she works. She's always worked for a living. My former wife, um, She's got that work ethic, so uh, she's never been one to go on welfare even. In fact, when I became a single dad, I raised my kids. I never went on welfare when I was raising my daughters. I worked my fanny off, and I never sued her for child support because of that gallant male thing I got going on. I, I couldn't do it. I mean, she, 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 she paid dearly childbirthing pains and nursing them and all that. There's no way. I could not do it. I, I'm just not that guy. I choose to be the guy that I am. And I like the guy that I am. And I like the way I feel about women. I, I, I put them on a pedestal. I vaunt them. I exalt them. And that's the way it is. It's just like a ship saying, wow, that is, you know, that's the ring on my finger, says the ship to the rudder, you know. So, anyhow, guys, but listen, that, that's my advice. But you want to make sure you can give that girl... Um, you know, admire her from a distance and, and size her up and say, wow, this is the girl I want and go for it. I'm, I, I totally endorse that because there's no better feeling in the world than being in love. It's the one, it, 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 it's the one that you're going to need to get any self-control because I've talked about these drugs that God put in our bodies that none of us can escape. I mean, you've got some powerful drugs in your body. Okay. This sexuality business, this is powerful stuff, man. Look how we're all hung up on sex. Look at it. I mean, you talk about this subject at all. I feel completely weird. I feel, oh, my God, he, he, he's being salacious or something like that. He's trying to be vulgar. You, you understand? Of course. He, he, you know, whatever. Oh, talking about sex. It's, why? I mean, it kind of reminds me of God. The first question he asked Adam and Eve after they ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and you know, the, this forbidden fruit, right? And, you know, what? Why? who told you you were naked? You understand? It's our own guilt about these things. But it's as natural as a day is long. We all know that. I mean, all the animals do it. They all copulate. They all have sex. It's very normal and natural. But, you see, we're weirded out because we have this knowledge. But now it's a sin because it's been made dirty because we got lied to. We believe the lie, and now it's in our genetics, and it's a whole big issue, right? But we should be oblivious. I mean, you know, conceivably, uh, humans ought to be able to have sex. I mean, in some areas they do. Of California beaches, you can go, and there is people 
there's beaches you can go to and see people having sex. There really is in California, okay? And, um, you know, so it, it happens, okay? I know one time I, my wife and I was in Big Sur, but it was, it was, there was no people around. It was on our honeymoon, and we went out in this green field, and it was secluded. It was private. We, we, we didn't have sex in front of anybody, but it was just beautiful, man. I mean, nothing like it. And, um, but you know, we'd be able to do those kind of things and be able to, we wouldn't invade people's privacy. It wouldn't be like, you know, now it's like, you know, I mean, man, uh, you know, I've seen it. I've seen it on the beaches in Santa Cruz, a young couple. It's like, yeah, I tend to want to stare, but you do feel kind of, you know, weird. It's right. It's kind of creepy to stare at somebody having sex, but you know, who hasn't done it? Okay. We've all done it. Who I mean, who hasn't been seen pornography? Okay. I remember watching an episode of this old Adam 12, you know, the cop show that started in the 70s, I guess. It ran for quite a while there. But I enjoyed the old cop shows. But I remember one time they were talking about this, uh, going to the movies, what are you doing tonight? You know, the partners and the, it was um, McCoy and, uh, oh, the other, Reed, I guess. Malloy and Reed were the cops, right? main stars in the show but you know he asked the other cop hey, you know hey yeah i hear there's um an uh, x-rated movie playing at the you know any of these cops are talking you know, so you know everybody's done it we've all seen it and we know the effect it has on us biologically the point here is that these drugs are super powerful super powerful the dopamines the endorphins the oxytocins the uh, testosterone the cortisone the uh adrenaline there's just all these very powerful drugs in our blood and body and brain that god put there and they can produce euphoria uh but they can be misused pretty easily and so it comes down to having self-control and uh and this is one of the reasons why so many people have addiction issues and they need to attend one of these 12-step programs because they do fall in love with their drug of choice. And people, when people have sex addictions, they don't realize. I mean, this is like a narcotic drug. So you'd be fine if you've got an issue with controlling yourself sexually. You're fine to go to a 12-step program like Narcotics Anonymous, for example. And that might be the issue you're having is controlling these drugs that God put in your body, right? Which you're stuck with. And that's a good thing in a way. You understand? If you've got control. If you don't, well, I mean, we all know, you know, what it feels like to be feel empty and vapid and floundering. And, you know, it's just not quite right. It's not 100% right. But yet, you know, they encourage us to be self-satisfied in college, right? I took health science in college and... And one of the things I learned from a very explicit video, uh, I learned that men are either this way or that way, right? Their, their member is either cut or it's not cut. Yeah, I mean, as if I didn't already know. I mean, I've been showering with guys, you know, since for a long time, so I know about that. But here I am in college, you know, 18-year-old, 19-year-old, guy in college and uh you know i got to watch this movie these girls in the class they were huffing and puffing and god almighty that room just smelled like female and it would smell good let's put it that way but you know the, look it was very explicit they show these men going all the way you know and all the way i mean you know, they had to show, you know, this guy, hey, I guess they were showing both cut and uncut that, you know, the, just because the guy's cut doesn't mean he has any problem in this regard. So he's able to e emit. I don't want to talk to you. see, I'm very uncomfortable talking about this stuff. But this is something they teach people in college. They teach you how to masturbate as if you don't know, right? But you don't feel right. So, you know, you kind of don't want to go there it was kind of, it's kind of a big deal to know that you could wow satisfy your biological desires by yourself you don't need a guy you don't need a girl because they showed the girl too they just showed a girl and what she's doing and you know so 
Everybody knows about that too. I mean, it's, hey, it's natural. Um, but of course, we know they don't show a woman that's been cut because that's that's brutal. That's uh, barbaric, and they don't want to encourage, you know, that kind of thing with women's the ladies. Uh, their parts are sacred. I I think that to don't don't touch her parts. With men, I mean, yeah, a lot of guys that are cut, they feel psychologically they say, oh, he's got big issues with sex because he's cut and this and that. Hey, you know what? Look. In the scheme of things, look, if your doctor didn't cut too much off, because I've heard these nightmarish stories, these poor bastards that were cut too much. I mean, what an idiot doctor should not have a license. Because, I mean, unless they can do surgery to correct that. But could you imagine guys being, you know, not being able to get an erection because it was painful? Holy God almighty. But. You know, you hear different stories. You say, well, I want to know, you know, there's different experts have different ideas. And what do the girls want? What do they think? And some, you know, say, well, the girls like cut guys because it feels better to them. And, hey, you know what? Who knows? All I know, biblically speaking, this is not a command from God. God didn't say it. It makes absolutely, God made it very clear in Scripture. It matters not at all. Okay, so this is not what God did to us, making guys get cut, all right? Don't blame God for anything negative if you perceive it as negative. And a lot of guys do. And they strive to, you know, become uncut. So, you know, I don't know what to say. All I know is that humans are weird when it comes to sex. And we've got our reasons, we've, and we've got issues. We all have issues. With our sexuality. It's un an uncomfortable subject for us to talk about. But it's so beautiful too at the same time. You know. It's it's a gift from God. Our sexuality is a, such a beautiful thing. That we should thank God for. So I need to move on from here. Because. Um, I feel like I'm getting in a rut here. Talking about uh, this. But there's no better feeling than being in love. And it's a lot more than sexuality. And what you're after, guys, is the cake. And the girl is the cake. And the icing, you just got to forget sex. Don't try to get down her panties, okay? No, no. Think long and hard about this. What you're after is a sweetie pie for life. You want to keep her. You, wanna, you want her to own you, okay? You want her to cherish you, okay? That's it. But you don't, you want to be a, a, an advantage, a plus, a positive, okay? But uh, you want her to be happy, and you've got to be very introspective and circumspective and thoughtful about what that means. But be sensitive to her, tune into her, be intuitive. Women are notoriously more sensitive, intuitive than men. And, you know, you got to really, hey, what does she want? I want, I want this to be a smooth, trans I want to get into her life. But I want it to be, to be easy. I want it to stay easy. I'm not a phony. So I want a good thing to flourish into a great thing for her. And to change her life in ways she never thought possible. That's all you want to be to her, guys, is a blessing. A big, fat, huge blessing that in her wildest dreams, you want her life to be like one big, fat orgasm. That's it, man. That's it. Forevermore. And this is going into eternity. This is, you pick the girl that you 100%, I'm going, I want to go into eternity with this one. I don't fear death anymore. With her by my side, I'm, I'm happy. I'm going to, I'm leaving this place with a smile on my face, man. I'm down. I'm in. I love her. And that's, if you don't have it, seek it. That's probably the best advice I can give you. It's a godly thing. And it took me a long time, admittedly. I've been a poor example for guys that could just <laughs> sever the ties and say, what, death do we part? <laughs> I'm done. I mean, you know, a lot of guys, hey, once their wife dumps them, they're like, hey, there's an, another bus coming down the line, lots of fish in the sea. They got this, you know, fanciful attitude about it. And I, I, I almost jealous of those kind of guys. But I'm just not that kind of guy. I'd be with my wife today if it was my choice. Should I be ashamed of that? Should I be embarrassed of that? It's kind of ridiculous at this point, 30 years later, but it's the truth. It doesn't help to lie. So, 
gosh, I know I'm totally obsessed talking about my own personal. I, I hope no, you know, I hope you don't think I'm any more narcissistic than the next guy. All I know is right now my life is in flux and I am completely smitten. I'm overwhelmed. I'm scared, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't, because if she gives me a chance, yeah, it's like, wow, am I really the man that I, I, I am portraying myself? Can I really step up to the plate or, or do I really, am I a phony? And, and it, you know, thinking that she's out of my league, I can't handle it. My, you know, I'm, I'm going to freak